For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma. Well, here it is Christmas Eve at 8224 West 73rd Street, New York City. And on the third floor in apartment 3B, all is serene and quiet. Except for my roommate, Irma Peterson, who is reading. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Ah! Look, Gene, a mouse! <laughs> now, don't get excited. It's lost. It's probably looking for Professor Kropotkin's room. Oh, gee, Jane, I've never been so happy on Christmas Eve, and that's because I have such wonderful friends. You and Richard and Mrs. O'Reilly and Professor Kropotkin... And, of course, Al. Oh, by all means, Al. Of course, I can't really consider Al a friend because I'm going to marry him. <laughs> Naturally. And, Jane, you don't know what it means to have a few good friends you can count on, especially a Christmas Eve. Well, you know, when you'd really like to be with your family, but mine lives over 1,500 miles from here. Irma, you never say much about your family. Oh, Jane, there isn't much to say. They're just an average family, just like me. <laughs> Perfectly normal people For instance, there's, there's Anna Peterson, my younger sister uh, She's not as old as I am It figures And there's my brother, Ernie Peterson uh, He's engaged To be married, of course <laughs> Yes, of course uh, What about your parents? Oh, I miss them the most They're just like a mother and father to me <laughs> You know that happens in most families, Irma. But, gee, they're, they're all in Minnesota, and I'm here. But I'm not lonesome because I'm surrounded by good friends, and, Jane, I really appreciate them. That's why I'm giving a Christmas Eve surprise party tonight for you and Richard and Professor Kropotkin and Mrs. O'Reilly and Al. Tonight? Uh-huh. Oh, Irma, honey. Well, I don't know how to tell you, but... Uh, tell me what? Well, dear... Uh, excuse me, honey. Hello? Oh, hello, Richard. What? Yes, I know it's formal. No, I've never been to the Long Island Country Club. Yes, I'm terribly excited. It'll be our second Christmas Eve together. Oh, I'll be ready. Goodbye, dear. Jane, you, you mean you're going out tonight with Richard? Or what about my Christmas Eve party? Well, honey, you didn't say anything about it, and Richard invited me to a Christmas party at the Long Island Country Club. I'd hate to miss it. It's the affair of the season. Oh, but this is Christmas Eve, and I... I thought tonight we'd be together. Christmas Eve isn't like other holidays, you know. Well, I realize that, honey, but... Well, I, I could understand it if it was Independence Day, then we wouldn't have to be together. <laughs> we could be independent. Irma, I'm terribly sorry, but... Well, there's nothing I can do about it. Richard asked me weeks ago. Anyway, my not being here shouldn't spoil your party. You'll, you'll still have Professor Kropotkin and, and Mrs. O'Reilly and Al... I understand, Jane. Uh, I still have the others. Sure. Uh, come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> How are my two little Christmas trees? One full grown and the other a little sapling? <laughs> Why, Professor? <laughs> Excuse me, a little yuletide joke. By the way, girls, a Merry Christmas to you both. Merry Christmas to you, too. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Professor. I hope you'll excuse me for coming down. I don't mean to interrupt, but I wasn't feeling so good. And when I don't feel so good, I always rush out of my room as fast as I can. Why? I wouldn't be found dead in that play. <laughs> <laughs> well, girls, do you realize tonight is Christmas Eve? Yes, and just look at that blanket of snow outside. Isn't it lovely? That is a matter of opinion. If Mrs. O'Reilly doesn't put glass in my windows, not only will I have a blanket of snow, I'll have a carpet of the same material. <laughs> oh, Irma, 
Angela, you'd better ask the professor about this evening before it's too late. Oh, yes. Uh, professor, will you come to my Christmas Eve party tonight? Tonight? Oh, Irma, I'm so sorry. You mean... You mean you can't come either? But it can't be helped. I'm, uh, tonight I'm playing my fiddle at the Gypsy Tea Room. I've been practicing all day. Oh, that's terrible. Yes, I know, but they pay me for it. <laughs> First Jane disappoints me, and now you. Well, now look, honey, the professor can't help it. He must earn a living. And after all, you still have Mrs. O'Reilly and, and maybe the Martins upstairs. And, of course, there's Al. Come in. Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. Well, the same to you, Mrs. O'Reilly. Merry Christmas. Say, Mrs. O'Reilly, that's a beauty from stairs, but that sign in the middle of it. You don't like it? Merry Christmas, lots of cheer. Remember the landlady or you'll freeze next year. <laughs> To me, it's not a sentimental thought. <laughs> Miss O'Reilly, I'm giving a big surprise Christmas Eve party tonight for you and Al. Will you come? Tonight. Oh, Irma, darling, I'm so sorry. You... You mean you're too busy, too? Yes, the Martins have invited me to go to Jersey with them. And since they owe me four months back rent, I can't afford to let them get on the train by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. First Jane turned me down, and the professor, now you... <laughs> Maybe next year, Irma, dear. Merry Christmas and goodbye. Oh, Jane. Oh, sweetie, now stop crying. I, I know you're disappointed, but you should have told us about your party earlier. And besides, honey, you won't be left alone. You bought some food, didn't you? What do you mean? Of course I bought some food. Then Al will show up, I guarantee it. <laughs> Speaking of food, I think I'll go up to my room and have my dinner. Are you cooking, Professor? No, I just take one look at that dump, I sit down and I eat my heart out. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, girls. I'm sorry, Irma. Honey, I I'm sorry things turned out this way for you. Oh, it's all right, Jane. This is one way of finding out who my real friends are. They're Al. Every one of them. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Merry Christmas. Oh, gee, Al. Merry, merry Christmas. I'm so glad to see you. Same here, chicken. I like being with you, too. Mind if I warm my hands on the radiator? Oh, of course not, honey. Uh, how'd they get so cold? Wanted to take the Crosstown trolley, but with all that snow on the ground, it took me four hours to find a transfer. <laughs> That's too bad, and your poor face, it's so red. Uh, uh, that ain't from the cold, chicken. They caught me with yesterday's transfer. <laughs> oh, my goodness, look at the time. Richard's going to pick me up in an hour, and I haven't even started to dress. Al, aren't you going to take your top coat off? Oh, thanks, Jane, but I ain't staying. Just came in to wish chicken a Merry Christmas. I gotta be on my way. Got a big deal brewing. Oh, Al. Oh, oh chicken, it's important. Oh, Business is business, chicken. I gotta be running along. But I'll be left all alone on Christmas Eve, and, and Al, I depended on you, my own boyfriend. Chicken, if I could only explain. <laughs> Don't bother. None of you must think very much of me if you can leave me alone on Christmas Eve. Find friends I have. Goodbye. How do you like that? Al, of all the low-down, contemptible, good-for-nothing... Hold it, Jane. I won't have you saying those things about the girl I love. <laughs> I'm not talking about Irma. I mean you. How could you desert her on Christmas Eve of all nights? Me, I, I have to go out with Richard, but you're her boyfriend. Oh, Jane, I love Irma. And when a man is in love, he ain't responsible. He, <laughs> he, he may do strange things, things he'd never do in his right mind. What are you talking about? I went and got a job. <laughs> you got a job? Al, have you been drinking? I knew it would shock you, but it's just for one night. <laughs> Want to make a little dough and buy Irma a present. Oh, well, I apologize, Al. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Forget it, Jane. Uh, oh. 
Oh, gee. Listen, Al. The Christmas carolers. Gee, that's pretty. Would like to stay, but I, I gotta get to work. Tell her I'll see you tomorrow, huh? Goodbye. Richard, Jane. Jane? Well, what's wrong? You sound terrible. Richard, I can't go with you to the Christmas dance. Why not? Are you ill? No, Richard, I'm all right. It's just that, well, Irma... You see, Irma hasn't any family or relatives in New York, and, and this Christmas Eve, all our friends seem to be busy, and I just couldn't leave her alone, Richard. I wouldn't want you to. Are you sure you mean that, Richard? Of course, honey, I understand. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. And Merry Christmas, Jane. Merry Christmas, Richard. But, Al, I thought you left. Came back for my hat. <laughs> Didn't mean to eavesdrop, Jane, but if you're willing to give up a good time tonight for Irma, I guess it's my duty to be with Chicken, too. Oh, Al, that'd be just wonderful. But wait a minute, what about the present you were going to get for Irma? If you don't work tonight, where will you get the money for it? Gonna hock my watch. But, Al, that's the only thing you own. You know that no matter how bad times have been, you always said you would never hock your watch. Well, a, a man like me don't need a watch. I, 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 I sleep all day long. So, so time is not important. And at night, it's too late to do anything. Uh, come in. Oh, it's you, Professor. Excuse me, Jane. I've been thinking about poor little Irma, and, well... I decided to give up the job so tonight I could be with her. But, Professor, won't that cost you money? You get big tips during Christmas. On Christmas Eve, it's not important to make money. It's important to be with friends. After all, what's money? Well, it's pretty important. I see you've been talking to Mrs. O'Reilly again. <laughs> no, no, my little Irma has no father in New York, so tonight, Professor Kropotkin will be her father. At a boy, Pop. Listen, Al, the first chance I get, I'm disinheriting you. <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. I took the liberty of walking in. Why, Mrs. O'Reilly, I thought you were on your way to New Jersey. I changed my mind. I got to thinking about poor little Irma being all alone tonight, and I just didn't have the heart to go. I'm going to stay here with Irma. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Professor Kropotkin just said he's going to be her father. I tell you, if that's the case... I'll be her mother. I got news for you. If you're the mother, I'll be on the train for Reno in the morning. Listen, everybody, I've got a wonderful idea. Irma was going to throw a surprise party for us. Now we'll throw one for her. We'll give her the best Christmas a girl ever had. Swell. I'll go out and hock my watch and buy the present. I'll get my violin. Oh, and we can have the party in my apartment. It's bigger. Come along, Janie, and we'll start decorating. Oh, it'll be a merry Christmas. Come on, Professor. Take me arm. A fair swap. She's been taking my blood all year. <laughs> Until Irma finds out she'll be the happiest girl in New York. Train now leaving on track six for Harmon, Poughkeepsie, Albany, Buffalo, and Point. Next, where to, Miss? Please, Mister, what is the fare to Minneapolis? Uh, fifty-eight dollars round trip. Fifty-eight dollars. I, I only have six. Where can I go for six dollars? Six dollars? Let me see. How about Niagara Falls? Oh, I couldn't go to Niagara Falls. I'm not even married. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll find some other place to go. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, you have film on your teeth. 
and you need Pepsodent with Irium to remove it. For film is worse than you think. Film collects stains that make your teeth look dull. Pepsodent toothpaste removes film, makes your teeth look bright. Film harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Pepsodent removes film, makes your breath fresh and clean. Film glues acid to your teeth, the very acid many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. Pepsodent toothpaste removes film and the acids it contains. Film never lets up. It forms continually on your teeth. Yes, you have to fight film every day. So brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste because no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. So start now to fight film. Brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent the toothpaste with an exclusive formula for removing film. Well, we're down in Mrs. O'Reilly's room, the professor, Al, and myself. Al is beaming proudly. Come January the 1st, he will have completed a solid six years of steady unemployment. <laughs> I'm setting the table, and Mrs. O'Reilly is out trying to find a Christmas tree. Oh, me aching feet. I've walked all over, and I can't find a Christmas tree. Well, did you see Irma anywhere in the neighborhood? No, I didn't, but it's nothing to worry about. We must get the tree before she gets back. Tree? Well, there's only one man who can help us. Who, Al, as if I didn't know? Who else but... Hello, Joe? <laughs> Al, got a problem. Need a Christmas tree right away. Huh? I can get one at Macy's already trimmed for a dime? Oh, the dime is for a glass cutter. The tree is in the window. <laughs> no, no, Joe, no. No, this, this is Christmas Eve. When I hear jingle bells, I don't want them on a patrol wagon. <laughs> what, Joe? You're playing Santa Claus tonight? Going down the chimney? Joe, this is quite a change for you, isn't it? Oh, you're going in with an empty bag and coming out with a full one. <laughs> Well, Joe, nothing I can say except good luck and Merry Christmas, noble friend. Oh, Al, what are we going to do? It's getting so late. Stand over there and, and we'll put out all the lights and give her a big kiss. Come in. Merry Christmas, honey. Here's one for me. <laughs> me too, my darling daughter. For goodness sake, will someone please put on the lights? <laughs> Richard. I thought Irma needed a shave. <laughs> You, I thought you went to the club. I couldn't take it. Same old crowd, same old monotony. So I realized that I'd rather be here with real people on Christmas Eve. Oh, gee, Richard, I'm so happy, and you're more than welcome. Where's Irma? Well, she thought we were all deserting her, so she went out in a huff. That's why we're throwing a surprise party for her. We're waiting for her to come back. Yeah, don't want to find chicken until we can get a Christmas tree, though. Uh, got any ideas, Richard? Why don't we go out and buy one? Nice gesture, Richard. We'll wait here for you. <laughs> Richard, you don't have to. It's my pleasure, Jane. I saw several on the way over. I I'll have one in a few minutes. Be right back. And I'll get the cake out of the oven. And I'll make some punch. And I'll tell you when it's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jane. Jane, what are you crying about? The party's taken four. I know. So wonderful having everyone pitch in, Richard getting a tree, and, and all of you giving up things. <laughs> Oh, this is the most wonderful Christmas I've ever had! Look, lady, this is your third round trip on this ferry boat. Ain't you got a home? Ain't you got any friends? No. Well, take my advice. Make some. All right, I'll, I'll try. Thank you, and a Merry Christmas to you. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. On a sleigh. Oh, what fun it is to ride. On a sleigh. In a one-horse open. Oh, oh, hold it, hold it, hold it, fellas. Look, lady, we're Christmas carolers. We don't do this for a living, but we enjoy it, and we rehearse a great deal. We don't mind you joining us, but we like to have the sleigh come after the horse. I'm sorry. Okay, fellas, let's do it again. 
Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride. When the horse comes after the sleigh. <laughs> Look, lady, would you mind running along? Oh, all right. I was just lonely. Merry Christmas. Pardon me, lady. Have you got a dime for your cup of coffee? Oh, you poor man. Uh, and Merry Christmas. Uh, maybe you ought to have another dime for a donut. Oh, thank you. Oh, gosh, I, I don't have any change. Well, would you like me to break that five for you? <laughs> if you don't mind. Uh... Are you all alone in New York, too? Yeah. <laughs> How about you? I'm from Minnesota. Minnesota? How well I know that place. You know, you look very familiar. I do? Oh, oh my name is Peterson. Of course. You're Peterson's little daughter. <laughs> My, my father's name is George. Hey, let me think. Peterson. Hey, that must be George Peterson. <laughs> no, how did you know? Why, I remember. <laughs> you used to live in, uh, in... Uh, Minneapolis. Let me see. Minneapolis. George Peterson. Minneapolis. <laughs> That's the place I never forget a name. Oh, well, it, gee, it, it's so nice to meet some old friends. Especially when you're lonely. You, you can keep the five dollars, sir. Thank you. But this is only a loan. I'll return it the next time I see your father. Good old Fred Petersburg in Wisconsin. <laughs> no, no, it, it's Peterson in Minnesota. Mister... Mister! Al, we've walked for miles. Perhaps we'd better go home and call the police to look for Irma. Maybe you're right, Jane. Pardon me, bud. You got a dime? Oh, Al, it's you. <laughs> you got that quarter you owe me? Mushface, ain't you got no character? How can you panhandle on Christmas Eve? Oh, great pickings tonight. Just got a fin from a blonde. Told her I knew her old man, uh, Peterville uh, Peterson in Minnesota. Peterson? Al? Mushface, which way'd she go? Cross town. You know what? Why? What's the difference? I've been feeling like a crumb ever since I clipped her. <laughs> Seemed like such a nice kid. Hey, would you give her back this fin? Yeah, thanks. And Merry Christmas. Hey, bud. Got a dime for a couple of <laughs> Come on, Al, come on. Let's go home and call the police. Now I'm really getting panicky. All right, Jane, I'm with you. Look, lady, I seen that picture, Mildred Pierce. Now you get off this bridge. I was just looking at the water, Mr. Watchman. Look, lady... Don't look down there. Everything that's beautiful is up here. It's Christmas Eve, you know. Yes, I know. I'm so lonely. Oh, I get it. You're all alone, huh? Yes. Any friends? Yes, but my closest friends are far away. Well, now, don't you cry, sister. You're coming home with me. We ain't got much, but we're happy to share it. Hey, Bill. Uh, yes, Sergeant? Did you happen to see a blonde girl? Say, lady, what's your name? Irma Peterson. That's all we want to know. Come along, sister. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Didn't do what? I don't know, but my boyfriend always says to say you didn't do it. <laughs> now, look, Janie, we got to be brave. Now it's up to the police. They'll find it. But we got to take our minds off it. Mrs. O'Reilly... Would you like to dance? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> I'll dance with her. I'll play the fiddle. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. 
Merry Christmas. How do you like that? I just started playing and already the neighbors got the police here. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a squad car pulling up. I think it's Irma. My chicken. Oh, Al, it is Irma. The police are fond of She's coming up the steps. Now, quick, turn out the lights, everybody. Come on, we can still surprise her and have the party. Come in, dearie. Irma, darling. Surprise, chicken. Here's a big kiss for you. And here's a kiss from your father. Why, Professor? <laughs> Quick, turn on the lights. I'm dying. I just kissed Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> Irma, darling, Merry Christmas. Where have you been? Oh, you're all here. I thought no one loved me, and I felt so alone. Oh, honey, don't you know that people always spend Christmas Eve with their loved ones? And you're the one we love the most. Exactly my sentiments. Bless my little Irma. You're like my own daughter. Sure, chicken. I'd never leave you. I want to spend all of my Christmas Eves with you. Oh, this is the best Christmas a girl ever had, surrounded by her friends. Oh, it's midnight. Is that right, Al? Wait a minute. Look at my watch. Al, where are you going to the window? Watch happens to be across the street. <laughs> You're right, chicken. It's 12 o'clock. Merry Christmas, chicken. Merry Christmas, Al. And Merry Christmas, Professor Kropotkin and, and Mrs. O'Reilly and Richard and Jane and all our friends. Merry, Merry Christmas. And as for me, my sentiments are the same as those of my friend Irma. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Nearly everyone has it. Just run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, that's film. And you'd better get Pepsodent toothpaste to remove it. For film collects stains that make teeth look dull. It harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid that many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. And remember, film never stops forming. No, it never lets up. So brush your teeth twice a day with film-removing Pepsodent. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. No other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. Get Pepsodent toothpaste with irium today. My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard and stars Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Mark Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it's brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Arium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conrad is Professor Kropotkin, Gloria Gordon was heard as Mrs. O'Reilly, and Donald Woods as Richard. Music was under the direction of Blood Gluskin. This is Wendell Niles speaking. The R-I-S-K, brisk flavor. That's what you get in Lipton tea. Yes, brisk flavor that picks you up, brings you back alive in a hurry. Brisk flavor that comes from Lipton's very special blending of the finest orange pico and pico teas. Try it. You'll find that this brisk flavor of Lipton's leaves you refreshed and ready to go again. And you can enjoy it often, because even wonderful tea like Lipton's costs less than any drink except water. Always ask for Lipton tea, the brisk tea, with that heartwarming Lipton lift. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsi and Show, My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.